Hello YouTubers, this is a quick session where I get to introduce you to a capability in the C-Sharp.net platform where you can implement aspect-oriented programming in a simple and native way uh, without having to you know, think too much about it or uh, kind of uh, think around it a lot. In fact, actually, I shouldn't have said aspect-oriented programming because I intentionally am, uh, you know, kind of uh, making this video uh, without purposifying the, uh, the the tooling or the the kind of library and the capability that I'm going to show you in a second. So you kind of let your imagination just go out there and kind of think about, you know, uh, use cases and 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 and, and uh, business cases that you can use to implement, you know, or leverage this particular capability. So. What am I going to talk to you about today? There is something in .NET Core called a uh, dispatch proxy. Dispatch proxy. And a dispatch proxy is a capability that allows you to kind of wrap an object, right, with uh, additional functionality and capability and, uh, you know, have this wrapper uh, represent itself as the object. That's kind of weird, right? Like, you know, I'm basically telling you that you can add additional functionality to your existing object without having to uh, 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 kind of unwrap you know after you do that wrapping right how is that going to work let's just let me kind of visualize things for you and then let's see if we can kind of implement this and make it uh, something uh, realistic so here is here's the deal it's a desktop okay so what does this mean let's say you have an object in here let's say let's call it this object is a student service right and this student service have a bunch of capabilities right it has functionalities it has capabilities so let so the the object itself is exposing you know a bunch of capabilities like this well here's my OCD I need to make it perfect so let's represent that object this way this is better there you go. So you have things like add student and you have things like I don't know update or modify modify student and so on and so forth and this is your student service great so this is your object and this these are the apis of your object so the you know the object is being interacted with this is the exposure layer of that object is to be able to communicate with these methods and then it does whatever it does in in the back end right so that means if you have a customer or a client that's sitting here and this client is kind of consuming you know these apis in a way or integrating with these APIs in a way that's just your typical, you know, uh, situation. A student service here, just to understand, I'm talking about a C sharp class that is uh, post fixed as a service, meaning that it's a component that has logic in it. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is something that allows you to add a wrapper around this guy, like a full wrapper around this guy, like this right while maintaining your existing apis and while maintaining your signature but the difference here is that you will be able to actually add additional capabilities and functionalities to add student and modify student in a specific way right it's a little bit of magic it has a lot of magic in it you know but it's beautiful and i think you'll be able to find you know a good use case for this uh, as I'm going to show you at the very end where my mind is when it comes to presenting, you know, uh, uh, software in a, in a specific way. Okay, so talk is cheap. Show me the code. So let's let's, let's create a new project. Just a very simple, I'm going to create a super simple console application. Let me increase the screen here just so people can see everything. So that's your scale, 150, great, great. And let's call this, uh, uh, I don't know, AOP demo. Okay, .NET 7, don't use top level statements, for God's sake, I, I don't like that one. But uh, here we go. So, okay, so this is a normal application. And uh, I don't know why it calls this class internal as a as a as a template i don't like that so much um but okay here we are so th this is the system right here and let's just create a service so i'm going to go here and say i have my services and under services i'm going to create a services a bunch of services that are responsible for <laughs> the students 
let's create a simple interface. So here is your interface and this is my iStudent service like this. And this student service is basically doing something, right? I don't care what it is, honestly. I'm just going to go here and say add student just so I don't, you know, distract you from what I'm really trying to show you. Like this is my way of saying this is not important, okay? Cool. Let's go write the implementation of this. So here's student service and this student service implements i student service is the implementation so far so good no problem right and i'm going to leave this as not implemented exception because i really i actually don't care it doesn't really matter what what this is going to be doing here comes the magical part right i'm going to create something on the outside here right uh, and i'm going to call it uh, uh, student service dispatch okay and this student service dispatch you know this is like I said I'm just showing case it's not something that you should be doing this in this particular way especially if you're building standard compliance systems this student uh, service dispatch I'm gonna make it generic so it's gonna take a type right and it's going to be implementing dispatch proxy this comes from system reflection okay now check this out I want to make sure that this T this type that gets passed in is a class. So I'm going to do like this. By the way, just, you know, for the people watching, this is a little nice, you know, uh, piece of information, tips and tricks, right? Uh, if you are, if you have multiple types like this, and by the way, you can call it anything you want. It doesn't have to be a T or an M or whatever. You can go and say, well, where I is unmanaged, for instance, where X is I don't know a struct maybe and so on and so forth. So this is how you define certain constraints, right? That kind of governs what what this generic type may be, right? For the people wondering what is unmanaged, that's every primitive type you have. So that's the int, u int, boolean, uh, all of these guys. Okay, okay, cool. So let's just go back to this. <laughs> I'll try as much as I can not to get myself distracted, but it's really important. These are the kind of moments that where I can teach you some of these things and, and learn about these things. Okay, so let's let's implement this. So control period, it will say implement abstract class. There's an abstract class here called invoke. Okay, and let's clean this up a little bit because it's kind of sad to see it this way. And what this thing is, this function is, this function gets called every time the proxy has any function on it, any public function on it, being called. So when that proxy is being called, this is a little bit of an advanced topic, so if you're not familiar with C-sharp in general and whatnot, this is, this is a little bit too advanced. You're going to have to do a little bit of research. Okay, but in addition to that, I want to do something else. I want to go here and say, I want to go here and say, I want that, well, let me just show you first what this looks like. I'm going to put a breakpoint here, right? And then I'm going to go and, well, would that work this way? No, let's just do that part first. So I'm going to go here and create a property. And this property is of type T. I'm going to call it target. And this target is your original class. Just like the memento pattern, where you keep a copy of the original object that you're working with, this is exactly the same thing. Sorry about that, but this thing is annoying. Let me let me let me uh, modify this real quick. I always do it this way because it's it's just not not my style. Okay, it's gonna error out a little bit because you know, uh, but it's it's perfect at the end. Okay. Are these guys good? I think these guys should be okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. In addition to this, I want to go and create a, a public function in here, public static function, and I'm going to call it create. And this create function takes a type. And in addition to that type, oh, look at that. This is really beautiful. And it's basically auto-completing <laughs> for me right away. And what I'm really trying to do here is that I want to create this proxy in here so I'm gonna go and say new dispatch proxy with certain uh, sorry uh, new proxy dispatch proxy let's see here uh, dispatch proxy 
I forgot the, <laughs> I actually forgot the, let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see, dispatch proxy. Yeah, create, yeah, so it's a, the internal function in this guy. So this, this dispatch proxy is gonna give you a function called create. Right, and inside that create, it takes a bunch of things. It takes that T and then the target itself that you're working with, which is, you know, student service dispatch like this. And inside that guy, we can pass in the T letter. So something like this. And then I'm gonna go and say, as student service dispatch with, with the T letter. I want this to happen, and I'm gonna explain to you why in a second. Okay. Inside that proxy, I'm going to assign the target, and then I'm going to go and say the proxy itself, return it as the original type. Right? Return this proxy as the original type. So this proxy itself is going to come back as a student service. And that's the little magic that this guy is doing. It's basically going and saying, I have more capabilities and more functionality. Although that I look I look like the object, the original object. So what does that mean? If I go here and say I student service, so this is my student service right here. And here's that, that's a new student service. I can now go and say, well, this student service, I want to proxy it. So I'm gonna go and say dispatch student service dispatch. Uh, student service dispatch with I student service. This is a static method, so I'm going to say create with the student service. So this here is going to change this from an, a normal student service into a proxy of that student service. A proxy meaning something that represents, is, is, is authorized or legitimately represents something else. Okay? Someone might say, okay, this is great. What does what does all of this mean? What that means is that if I go and say student service dot add student like this, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna go into that invoke first before it goes to the actual method that you're trying to call. You wanna see? Let's take a look. So if I run this system now. Watch this. See, it hit that, it hit that uh, not implemented on the invoke, right? And if you continue, it'll just say not implemented, and then it's going to die, right? That's weird, because you actually just called add student on this, but you're not really calling add student, even though it looks like, it looks it's like a Loki from the MCU <laughs> universe right you know it's it it looks like something but in reality it's actually something completely different how do i call the actual add student let's go and put in a dummy implementation in here and let's just type in console right line and then uh hello student in here watch this and then in the student service dispatch I'm going to basically go and say, give me this target that I created earlier. So it will be target method dot invoke. And there's the target, the arguments. So I'm basically, every time a method is called, you get that method information right here with all the arguments that, that were passed to that very same method. And I'm going to tell you what's the most famous example for that. You're probably already thinking about it, but let's just keep going. If you do it this way and you just go and say return in here, it should print out, watch this. It should print out hello student. But there is more. Even though that this function doesn't have anything else other than hello student, I can basically now go here and say console write line hello proxy student right what that basically means is that you can now go and say I am calling the function it's the exact same method the exact same thing but there is additional code happening remember like going back in here this client is calling the exact same APIs from the exact same or seemingly the exact same uh, uh, method on the same uh, service but in reality there's an additional layer in here this one in blue here 
that's actually saying, no, there's actually more to this than that. We are actually offering you additional additional capabilities, you know, in a, on top of that. The most common use for this is for you to go and say, I want to do logging, right? But I don't want the logging and exception handling to be kind of um, uh, causing pollution, right? I want to be able to look at my code and I know that it's just my code and nothing else and that's it right but the problem with this is that you know like like the the creator of c sharp you know anders hasberg he basically says i don't like the idea of code that's hidden between the lines that i don't necessarily know anything about it's very problematic and very dangerous you know to have something that's hidden like that right but again th the idea of this video is not to give you a purpose for this i'm giving you a tool that you can think about how I'm gonna purposefy this. You know, I'm thinking about using it in mocking. I'm thinking about using it in upgrading the standard to a new uh, kind of uh, paradigm or pattern. I'm thinking about writing uh, certain capabilities and certain functionalities. But I thought to myself, you know, I, you know, I was just talking to uh, 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 in the podcast. I was just talking about not to keep anything in your pocket, right? Just to, before you go to bed, you know, make sure you share everything you have with the world. So this is a capability that. I think you might be interested in. Uh, do not abuse it. <laughs> you know, do not take this capability and go do crazy stuff with it. But it's definitely something for you to 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 think about and uh, to be interested in. Uh, one thing that if you want to read about this, if you're still in the .NET framework world, let's just use this batch proxy. And here is a very beautiful uh, article written by Mark Mark Rosos, uh, and he talks a lot about you know, what it used to be called real proxy in here. And then that was with the .NET framework and then a lot more information about, you know, and examples about how this works, you know, all the different ways you can implement this and all that. Of course, you know, as you can see, he's using it for logging. So now your method, your original method itself is very, very clean, but logging and tracing and all that cool stuff is happening just automatically without you having to think about, about anything. I hope you find this uh, short video uh, useful. I hope you find it a little bit inspiring. I'm going to put the uh, uh, links and even a uh, uh, the code that I just wrote for you in the description area uh, of the video. And, you know, just think about it. You know, I, I, again, I'm not trying to purposefy this. Think about it. What can you do with a capability like this if you are able to kind of represent you know, different aspects of your object. What I always tell people is that if you're writing object-oriented programming, that means you're working with objects. And objects are 3D, right? So they have different, you know, you know, uh, aspects and different, you know, sides and directions and ideas. So how are you going to represent this, you know, in, in a particular way? Are you going to use kind of a, a layered approach where you add layers upon layers upon layers. So there's a layer of exception handling and then there's tracing on top of that and then there's more and more on top of that. Just something for you to think about and hopefully you find this uh, content useful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on another video. Take care.